All right. You ready? Be natural. Be funny. Be cool. Be you. You ready? Sure. You ready? Okay. She's ready. Uh, okay. YouTube Q&A part one. Ooh, part two. We already tried this. We did this already? Like a year ago. I think probably right around a year ago today. Um, it was from my channel though. That you still haven't made. Oh, well, you we were talking in the entire video. Yeah, we, we did all about you. We, uh, it's raining. Sorry, I get distracted. Anyways, uh, we did make a Q&A last year. Some of you guys might have remembered that and sent in questions last year as well as now. I apologize. I ruined the video last year because it was for... It was for me and you were talking like this. Kind of like this, where I'm just talking you and just, Liv's just, just like... It's so overpowering. Yeah, I'm working on it, uh, but not really. So, here we go. This is for my channel, uh, YouTube Q&A. I asked you guys on Instagram um, to ask us uh, anything you wanted. I tried to keep it more about... There's a couple basketball things in here, um, but more about kind of just us too. And I wrote it down. I didn't even read these. Because I'm salt of the earth. I don't know. Uh, I'll get into the technology. I write things down. Okay, uh, here we go. Ving Graz asked, uh, why WVU? Why did I choose WVU? Because of me. That's what she likes to tell people. That's why. And I think there's some <laughs> underlying there's some underlying truth uh, to that. We'll get into kind of how we met here at WVU, but I chose WVU uh, because of the culture. It's gritty. It's a uh, hard working blue collar. I grew up in the same kind of environment in Wisconsin. Um, and, you know, Hugs has created a culture here that, that just fits me. But what you're all here to know is why Liv chose WVU. Yeah, why I chose WVU. Yeah. I chose WVU because I'm from West Virginia. But why'd you come here? I came here because my mom came here, my sister came here, my brother came here, and it's really affordable, especially being an in-state kid. So it kind of just made sense. I always knew I was going to come here. There really was no other option. Like I just, I always liked it here. I grew up coming to football games and stuff like that. So it just felt like it felt natural. Sam Millstone yeah. asked, what's your game day routine? Is this for you or me? It's for both of us. You want to go first? <laughs> no, what's your game day routine? Okay. Um, thank you, Sam, for sending in your question. Uh, my game day routine consists of generally going to class, uh, but before that, I'll wake up, brush my teeth, eat some breakfast, go to the gym. Those are kind of uh, just kind of every day, game day or non-game day, just kind of get my mind right, wake up, get the, get the blood flowing, um, and just kind of go over uh, what to expect, certain situations I might see um, in the game that night. So that's kind of my morning workout routine. I'll go to my classes if I have any. I have a lot of online, thank you. Uh, so I just jump on there, get my stuff done. And then I try to be on the court three hours before the game. Um, You're in the Coliseum like six hours before the game though. Liv never sees me is what she's trying to say. No, we always get lunch before you go in. Yeah, we'll grab Panera or Qdoba uh, or anything, you yeah. know, around here. But you're always in there, like if a game's at 7, you're in there at like noon. Yeah. Or like 1. <laughs> yeah, I get there fairly early. Uh, a lot of times I'll take naps, like even before that three hour mark before the game, because we have shoot around. Um, but yeah. Then I go on uh, pregame. I listen to, I don't listen to music necessarily as much. Um, I listen to Kobe Bryant and different YouTube videos with him, which is kind of weird, I think. I don't know. Some people probably do it. Uh, but he's got a bunch of really cool stuff. Rest in peace to the legend. But I listen to him, you know, talk about his motivations and, you know, different things, how he preps. Uh, it just kind of helps me get in the zone. And then, uh, then tip off. I look up and find Liv. And what do we do? Oh, we dab. We dab. God, we're so corny. <laughs> you already hate us if you're watching this. He but looks anyways. up in the stands and he finds me and he uses his little sly. Mine's a little less sly. I stand up. Yeah, I'm in warm up lines, so I just kind of like just slide one in there. Mine's a little extra. The dab is eternal, it's never going to die. 
What is, what's your game day routine look like though? It's a little less exciting. Um, I oh, wake up usually, go to the gym. It's pretty much like every other day, except we always get lunch. We had class last semester together, which was usually on a game day too, I feel like. Yeah. Because we had class like what, Tuesday, Thursday, which yep. usually was a game day Tuesday. So we would always go to class and then we would get lunch and then he would leave to go into the Coliseum. And then I would probably just do homework and then get ready and pick up my friends and we'd all go to the game. Uh, elect, elect Nessner. What? Where are you? Oh. This one. Favorite thing about each other. You take this one. My you go first. My favorite thing about you is your drive and how motivated you are. It makes me like get up and want to do more. I feel like always seeing him doing so much. So it's nice. You motivate me. Um, my favorite thing about Liv is uh, I like just being around her, her energy. Um, she is super passionate about things. Um, but I also love, and this can, this is a double-edged sword, uh, I love that she's a little bit stubborn and bullheaded because I need that. Um, and, and we're similar in that way. So Which it makes... always great. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't doesn't always work out for the best, <laughs> but I mean, it does make things interesting, exciting, and fun. Yeah. Our life's fun. I mean, yeah. we're always doing something. I think we're always doing something. We're rarely just. Everyone always says that we're never yeah. just like no. hanging out. We're always doing something or have something we need to get done, or especially him. Yeah. And then he makes me so. I love a lot more about her, uh, but that's something that sticks out. All right, here's the big one. This is the question we got Ooh, quite a bit. I have to ask you this one. Yeah, yeah. That's Chloe, how, how, <laughs> how did we meet? How did we meet Jordan? We knew each other before getting to WVU via social media, Instagram specifically. I what, know. How old were we? Super lame. Uh, juniors in high school, I believe. Um, so. Something like that. Uh, I saw Liv. Um, <laughs> and, uh. That's how we knew each other initially, but then it so was... So knew he knew who I was and I knew who he was and that was really like the extent of it. Yeah, we didn't like talk extensively. No, I mean, couple he, would, snaps he, would always, he would always try and talk to me and I always ignored him. You know that's you true. You just really wanted to say that. But anyway... I didn't really want to say that. I feel bad almost. But he used to like slide in all the time. He used to always Snapchat me and I used to always leave him on open. Not always. Oh, I, a lot. I used to send a lot of like lip syncing videos like the different songs <laughs> it was that day and age um she would leave some of them unopened but anyways coley wants to know how we met okay. and how we met was week one of school uh it wasn't even week one it was my first day in west virginia at west virginia my first day like ever before class even started before orientation like my first day i moved in yeah almost that's hard to even believe but literally day one of fall semester. I had been here for a summer, but the first day she got on campus, she was walking to a class. Yeah, no, no, class didn't even start yet. It was like before orientation, orientation. before all of that. I was walking with my cousin up to the lair. We were just going to grab like So she was walking down the street um, and I was in- uh, Right in front of Woodburn. Yeah, right in front of Woodburn. You guys don't know what that is. That's like the staple of WVU. Um, but she was walking down the street uh, with her cousin, which I didn't know. It was just her walking with a guy. So looking back, kind of ballsy, considering I didn't know who this male was. And I was with my buddy uh, and teammate, Emmett. And- uh, You're in your Jeep. Yep. And I saw a girl I thought I recognized, Liv, with- um, I had a hat on. Like I had a hat my pulled head. down. I had a hat pulled down. I was like looking down at the ground. You couldn't really see me. He never saw me in person before. But I knew this was an attractive female that I'd somehow recognized some way, shape, or form. I didn't know exactly how. Then she got closer, we were stopped in traffic, and I noticed it was her, and I rolled down the window, it was a crank, um, and I yelled, Liv, yeah. uh, like what's up, or whatever. And um, she kind of looked up and were you startled or? I was like, just like, what? Who... I didn't know who yelled my name. I just like looked up. And I just I screamed her name at her. That's like, like, like I had. I screamed it. I was like looking down at the ground, screamed my name. I looked up and I think I just like went like this. Yeah, I had like five seconds to figure out how I was going to really. And you play. snapped me. You snapchatted me right before this and I left you on open. 
or something like that. And then, because remember, you messaged this me. Cannot be confirmed or denied. <laughs> you messaged me. You messaged me, and um, you said something like left on open on Snapchat, but at least I get a wave in real life or something like that. That can be confirmed. Yeah. I did snap her directly after just screaming her name because I didn't know what else to say or do, um, <laughs> and she kept walking. But then I snapped her after that, and that's how we first officially met, and the rest is history. Yeah. Here we are, two two years. We pretty much started hanging out. This right August will be that. two years yeah. of, of our first encounter. So going off that question, Kylene Berg wants to know who slid in first. Who do you think? Yeah, I can't deny it. I slid in first, for I, sure. Yeah, why? Don't think, I, did you at one point ever think about it? Think about what? Sliding in. Sure. See, I knew it. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Brandon McKinney, is it hard having a girlfriend who gets DMs from famous people? Is it hard having a girl who gets DM from famous people? If you can do this. Hold on. Really if, unfortunate. If, if you can do that, you think I'm worried about some rapper sliding into her DMs? <laughs> no, no, but in all seriousness, um, it's an adjustment, I guess. It's kind of like, a, I don't know, when you're in high school, relationships are different that way. It's you're younger, it's kind of you're in this bubble. And then college, it's kind of- A lot of people. It's a lot of people and everybody knows everybody, like literally everyone, so. Can it be hard? Yeah, but I mean, that's just relationship stuff that you work through and, but main thing is, is I trust her and we're on the same page. So simp life, if the, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but no, it's not that bad. And I can do that like one out of seven times. So Bryce go Gozer, Bryce Gozer. I'd say Gosser, Gozer. Gosser, Bryce yeah, Gosser. Gosser. Yep. Why number five? Um, I chose to be number five before I think I even knew I was choosing anything. Like in all my little home videos, um, at the YMCA, I was wearing five. My dad wore five. Uh, that's, that's ultimately the reason I wear it. Um, I've had opportunities to kind of change it or, you know, switch it up, but figure at this point, there's no reason, uh, reason to switch. Wear it for pops. Shout out Matt McCabe. Ryan Singh, plans after WBO. What are your plans after WBO? Well, me personally, uh, my plans after WVU are to um, play professionally as long as I can. My goal is to play professional basketball until I'm 40. Uh, stay tuned on whether or not that happens because 40 is, I mean, ancient in basketball years in terms of your body holding up and all that stuff. But that's my goal. It's been my goal since I was this big and uh, still chasing it every day. And after that, I mean, who knows? It could be something in the game of basketball, it could be coaching, it could be outside of the game of basketball. Um, I'm not real sure, but Liv, what are your plans after <sighs> school? Well, I'm graduating a year early, so I'll Same. probably get my master's. Same. And then after that, look for a job so if anyone's looking for someone in public relations advertising or communication hit me up wow what a shameless plug <laughs> see charles daily routine what's your daily routine uh my daily school routine would be wake up at about 6 a.m i get up um i go work out we both get up early you definitely get up like 30 minutes earlier than me but i always am at the gym by seven o'clock okay that's fine like I was saying, <laughs> I wake up, uh, brush the teeth, grab some breakfast, oatmeal normally, uh, go to the gym, work out, um, and then I generally try to schedule my classes earlier in the day. So I take either an 8.30 or 9.30 a.m., uh, run to that class. Uh, after that class, I have study hall. So I have to come back to the Coliseum where we play, and that's where our academic center is. I sit down with my favorite lady, Stephanie, and uh, do all my homework, do study hall, um, and then like we'll either have practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday is like one to four or 12 to three. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday is four to seven, that's our late practices. Um, but I'll go into practice like an hour early, get taped, uh, stretch out, 
and then get ready to go on the floor, practice uh, from whatever time that is. And then um, I might have a tutor after, depending on what classes I'm in. This upcoming semester, I won't be. Uh, and then I will come back home. And by that time, it's 8 p.m., 9, 8, 9 p.m. And we eat some dinner and watch The Bachelor if it's on. Please, God, let The Bachelor come on. Oh, I miss The Bachelor. What is your, that's my daily routine. Liv? My daily routine is, I'm usually up and at the gym at seven. Wake up, brush my teeth, all that, obviously. Go to the gym from seven to like 8.30. I come home. I usually schedule my classes like from 11 to two or 11 to three every day, just cause I like, at those times the best. Uh, so I go to the gym, I come home, shower, I'll lay down for a little bit sometimes if I'm like really, really tired, make breakfast and I'll go to my classes for the day. We'll usually grab lunch or something. Um, and then I'll come home and clean, get some homework done and start dinner for when he gets home after practice. Yeah. And that's really it. So her channel is gonna be up eventually. Try to do like day in the life uh, vlogs. I'm trying to get better at it with the other camera, but it's difficult and kind of uncomfortable, but whatever. Uh, so we'll do that. Well, Morris, would you change your height if you could? How tall are you, Jordan? How with you? with or without shoes? Without shoes. Why do you have to? See, I feel personally attacked, Will. You gotta do that. I'm 5'9". Wow, <laughs> that sucks. I'm 5'9 without shoes. But how tall am I without that's, shoes? That's the God's honest truth. For my short kings, uh, who want to have the next generation of athletes. Let you in on a little secret here. The son is never shorter than the mother. So what that means, hypothetically, down the road. My family's all tall. Her being 5'8", less about the family and more about the fact that her specifically being 5'8", her genes. My son won't be shorter than that and hopefully break that six foot mark. God, that's embarrassing. Thanks a lot, Will. Appreciate Fingers that. Fingers crossed. Would you want to be shorter if you could? No, I like being 5'8". Yeah. Maybe like 5'6". I like being like a little, a little lankier, yeah. a little taller. T4YDK. T4 yep. What do your tattoos mean to you? Um, ooh, good one. Are you going to be able to show? Yeah, you, do, you go first. It's just a flower. But Jordan made me get. I didn't make. Yeah, he oh, did. That sounds was, so bad. It was my first tattoo, and I wasn't gonna get one. And Jordan was like, "Get oh, one." At get first, one, you were all one, for one, it. Then one. you were about to like kind of so check I just it got out. A little flower. A little flower. Nine one nine four nine nine on my hip in red, and that is the year my sister was born, the year my brother was born, and the year I was born. Ninety one, ninety four, ninety nine. What about you? You have a few more than me. A couple more. Um, so for me, uh, this, if you can't see it, is 505. Uh, that was my grandfather's time of death, and he's somebody who I, you know, cherish very much and wanted to, you know, honor him. This is for the coal miners of West Virginia. Uh, this is a realism piece uh, that my guy Jake did down at... Uh, Patty's art spot in Morgantown. And then I have a couple through here. Oh, I completely forgot you had those. Um, my mom's name, uh, Dove for her. And then uh, my very first tattoo, uh, Philippians 4.13. Um, just like, you know, you read in every 13 year old <laughs> girl or boy's Instagram bio, I can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens me. Very original. Yeah, not real original, but still powerful, still meaningful. Uh, and yeah, those are my tats. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks guys. Uh, appreciate you watching. If you got all the way through it, uh, we'll see you next time. Hopefully there'll be some day in the life videos. Uh, what was the other thing? Um, oh, since we're in quarantine right now, I want to do a kind of a whole video, um, on that and, uh, our lifestyle and what it's been like, but yeah. thanks very much for watching. We love you guys. Peace.